All right, what's up, everybody? So today I have, again, a question that I got straight from a paper. So if you want to know what the paper is, uh, please make sure to click the link below. It'll be there. But let's get to the question. It says, in mice, it has been shown that heart cells stop dividing in the presence of reactive oxygen species, ROS. These reactive oxygen species impose stress on the cardiomyocyte and ultimately arrest their cell cycle. Based on this assumption, what would happen to these cells, the, the cardiomyocytes, if they were placed in a hypoxic environment? So, again, the answer choices can sometimes be confusing, so I suggest not reading them right now. But let's look at the keywords. The keywords are reactive, oxygen, species, right? That's a keyword. Another key word is hypoxic. So there are certain words that I know people say the MCAT's not a memorization test. It's not, but there are certain words that they expect you to know. And sometimes they won't explicitly say what does hypoxic mean, but they'll embed it in a question like this where you're expected to know what it means. And hypoxic means um, lack of oxygen. So if you're placed in a hypoxic environment, you're placed in an environment where there is pretty much no oxygen. Okay, and so make sure you add that to your bank of words to know for the MCAT. So assuming that's that, let us now talk a bit about reactive oxygen species. So as you know, we use a lot of oxygen, and in the oxygen, every time the oxygen is taken in, most of it goes to the mitochondria. And so reactive oxygen species, you'd assume, are a bypass of this original oxygen. Because what happens is this original oxygen goes into the mitochondria, and sometimes what can happen is it can turn into a lone pair. Uh, it can have an unpaired electron. And this is known as a free radical. Free radicals can be very, very, very uh, detrimental to a cell because that extra lone pair, which, I mean, that unpaired electron, notice how this is O2, right? And if you have an unpaired electron on O2 just by itself, that unpaired electron is very reactive. And this can be bad for the cell. And in this case, it actually causes... Uh, cardiomyocytes to stop functioning. So how are reactive oxygen species formed? Well, they're formed as a result of cellular respiration. And they're, this, is, this might be a bit of an oversimplification. I'm sure they're formed by a lot of other processes as well. But in the mitochondria, the biggest thing, remember, the O2 is being used for cellular respiration. So the more O2 you use, the more likely it is that you'll eventually, in, as a byproduct of cellular respiration, make, you know, some sort of lone pair or, or free radical that ends up being reactive. And so the more you cellular respirate, the more likely it is you have formed lone pairs um, that don't have both electrons and they'll be free radical and they'll be reactive. Uh, and so assuming we understand that, let's now understand what overall process is being described. So you'll see the question is written always at the top to give you context. But basically I'm telling you, as a result of cellular respiration, what, we'll, what we're going to see, right, if we follow this arrow, from cellular respiration, we'll get some reactive oxygen species, right? And reactive oxygen species will now go up to these guys, and these you may not understand. These are the heart muscle. So this is heart muscle. Um, and this heart muscle obviously has cardiomyocytes in it, right? So the cardiomyocytes will be affected by the reactive oxygen species, and what will happen is they will arrest uh, growth. Right. So they won't grow anymore because there's so much reactive oxygen species. This is the normal flow. What do I mean by normal flow? This is what's normally happening because usually we're always cellular respirating and this cellular respiration creates reactive oxygen species which then go to cardiomyocytes and arrest their growth. But now, let's say we are put in a hypoxic condition because that's what this question is saying. Assume you're put in a hypoxic condition. If you're put in a hypoxic condition, you have no O2. Right? There's no O2 around. And if you don't have O2, believe it or not, you have no cellular respiration because cellular respiration relies on oxygen. And if you don't know that, um, feel free to review a video on cellular respiration. Uh, there are plenty on YouTube. I think I might also have some. But if not, you can go ahead and just know that O2 is needed for cellular respiration. If you don't have it, you won't have cellular respiration. If you have no cellular respiration, do you get an increase or decrease in the amount of reactive oxygen species? Believe it or not, you get a decrease, right? Because you know, if you're not cellular respirating, you're more like you're less likely to produce any sort of reaction, reactive oxygen species. And if you don't have any reactive oxygen species, these cardiomyocytes are going to be in better shape, 
right? And the reason why they're going to be in better shape is because they're not being arrested in growth anymore because their um, the reactive oxygen species won't be imposing stress on them. And if they're not being arrested, what you'll see is you get an increase in their division rate because they now feel relaxed. They're like, oh, there's nothing in my environment that's going to hurt me. I'm okay. And so what will happen is they'll increase their division rate. And so now if we predict what's going to happen as a result of a hypoxic environment, you could predict that you're going to get a decrease in reactive oxygen species and an increase in division, right? Because if you have a decrease in reactive oxygen species, you'd increase division rate. And therefore, the answer here, the answer here that matches is A. All right, great. I'm trying to keep these videos a bit shorter, and I hope this works. So if you guys have any questions on this, please let me know. And again, remember, the paper's linked down below. Read the paper. It's awesome. And obviously, let me know if you have any questions. See you guys in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe, uh, and thanks for watching.